Cameron, Cameron Williams, comes down from Bad come up from Badala, haven't you? Yep, today. didn't have to come too far. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Cameron can tell you what he's doing as he goes along. You don't need me to talk for you. No, you're so right, Gilda, thanks. Just welcome and I hope you have a good day. Thanks a lot, you too. Nice to have you here. <laughs> thanks, yeah. I guess what I'll do today, I'll, I'll take you through what, what my lesson's like these days. Um, I just spent last week at Brookvale TAFE and it works really well. Um, normally I'll show you a few instructions and everyone runs off and gets on the wheels and I've got a full-time assistant and we, then we get everyone up to that stage and then another instruction. Um, by the end of the week everybody's throwing everything so it seems to work really well. Um, I'm just going to throw a back pad first. That pad is just a plate without a rim. But, um, I like the back pad just to be nice and flat with the edge curled up slightly. Don't, don't do the grooves and the, any of that business. Just like it to be as flat as possible. Slightly dished just with the edge lifted up. And learning how to centre a small ball of clay. Just using one hand and not looking at it is the, what I consider to be the first step. Um, I think it teaches people to centre instantly instead of taking a long time. If you, if you don't look at it, then you're not relying on your eyes to pick up the information. Um, and you rely on your hands, and your hands will be far more responsive. And it's where you really do get just about all the information you need anyway. So, um, throw the ball on and seal it on. Now you get your left hand, you make a box out of it. Okay? When I mean a box, I mean you need a, a right angle in those knuckles so that within this hand you've got two really distinctive points that you're pushing with. Um, not just one big, big flat pad that's on the side. Um, your thumb goes flat across. And you're sitting so close, the elbow <coughs> jams against your hip or your leg, and the side of your hand will come in against the side of the of the clay there. If you picture this as a wheel head, as a on the wheel head as a clock face, then you'll be coming in the side here at about, about nine o'clock, so directly on the side. You put some water on, thumb plate across the top. Then you move your wrist from nine o'clock around at six o'clock. And you hold that steady. And you try and shut your hand like it's some kind of like closed peg shutting with your thumb flat across the top. And you just hold that there and then you take it away. Um, and then that works. You're using the, the bone in your arm here as a, it's like a mechanical device. Because as it goes from here to there, the, the pressure builds up on the base of your, on the butt of your hand. And, um, and that, that's where you're getting all your pressure from. And whilst it's only a small piece of clay, um, but what I'm showing you translates to when you want to get, get bigger and bigger. That's, um, that's the main thing. And that, that gets your timing right. Um, so you, you're feeling the clay. And you're getting it centred really quickly. Uh, out of this, you usually make a three-step bowl. I like to keep the instruction pretty simple at the start so that when everyone goes off to the wheel I've only got three things to remember. <laughs> uh, there's too much, you give everyone too much info then everyone runs off confused and it's really hard to actually teach them. So I'll leave my left hand on the side, I get my right thumb out like a hitchhiker, hitchhiker style, and that thumbnail goes right in the very centre. My right fingers point back towards me. I just focus on pushing that, that right thumbnail down the middle. Those fingers back towards me. So it's the, the shape of that right hand. Those fingers get under there. And that puts this in a good shape for the next move. Okay, you've got them right in underneath there. So you haven't got the clay wandering off over the bat. You've got somewhere really defined to start your next move from. And the next move is what I call like a, a duck bill with your left hand. So you keep your fingers straight, your thumb like that, so you squeeze against those fingers. And on top of that, I put the web of my finger so that when I squeeze here and the clay rises up, 
the Webmer finger sits on the rim and controls the rim as it comes up. <coughs> so there's nowhere there that I don't have control of the clay. It's not like I've just got two points on the outside squeezing and bringing up. It'll always come up unevenly. But use your left hand and you'll squeeze like a duck's bill into the web of that finger. And pinching right down the bottom. There. And the inside fingers just work their way from the bottom. And back up to the top here. regular throwing tools on the bench here at Brookvale Tafe. I've got myself a little B grade selection here but it'll do for the day. So that's like the first thing that you do. You learn to make. You just have to wait to keep getting this off too. With this sort of thing, you just um, just lift it off and put it on. Right. After that, you usually throw on two to three times the amount to do a, a larger bowl. That's the next thing. And throw the clay on, seal it on the tip of the finger. And the elbow anchor in front of you. These are $10, I'll, I'll cone it up and push it down again. I made this clay before I went away, so it's a little, it's a little lumpy. It'll be okay for me. Um, so with the bigger bowl, open up. I'm still going to open up with the thumbs. I'll open up with both thumbs now. And concentrate on that one being in the middle. Well, the first, first move I do this time is using my left hand again, like a box, on the side and I angle it out. So what I, want the, I want the bowl to start coming out for me. I have my hand, it's a box hand, angle it out like that. And I use my right hand next to it like a duck bill and it just angles across those fingers work against the butt of that hand so I'll squeeze the clay rise up and I'll stop there so I haven't even gone up yet I've just stayed right at the bottom and squeezed and the clay has risen up off the bottom and I'll make sure everything's kind of lubricated well and I'll relax my left hand and I'll, I'll pinch with my right allow that to spread when I get to the top I'll put the web and finger over the rim and consolidate it when you're coming up the side do you open that base at the same time? no, no I open the base up with my two thumbs to begin with and then you, so that, that gives me that, that shape yeah. the bowl and then then I um I'll pick up from there, but now I'll go, I'll go right into the very centre of these fingertips and um, I'll push down, I'll make my way out and I'll come up against my, my right knuckle. This is where I start using my knuckle and my thumb to squeeze the clay up. You can face the bottom too? Yes, yeah, so I've, I've kind of done that at the start, but even now too I'll, I'll always start right in the very centre. I know if it's stoneware, it's always a good idea to work your fingers back into the centre. Uh, what I do with my hands, I make a set of tongs. Okay, I've got the my thumb and knuckle. And with my left hand, I put that back of that thumb in that little saddle there. That these fingertips come down against the, that part of my knuckle. 
but I can reach in and I can squeeze and I've got good communication between inside and outside because they're connected. And I start right in the very middle and I work the fingertips back towards until they find that knuckle and squeeze and the fingertips sit on top of the knuckle and then the knuckle moves along at the same time. Just before I get to the top, I'll squeeze my left thumb against the finger next to it and that'll spread the top out. If you've got two points right next to each other inside and outside, you separate them and twist, it'll, it'll spread the pot. Rather than just pulling on the inside and having, a, having an oval or a teardrop shape, there's too much stress on everything underneath. shaping bowls. But, um, one of the most critical thing is, is um, how to adjust the pressure as you, as you come up the side. Right in the very bottom there, you know, in the middle of the bowl, I've got the support of the bat underneath. And you have to push really quite hard on that area to, to send it out to where you want the bowl going. But as soon as you leave the support of the bat and the, and the wall of the pots in mid-air, you have to be incredibly gentle with it. Otherwise you'll overstretch the wall and you'll get that, that hump that develops mm. around there. Um. So I'm just going to use my hands to do the finishing on this one. Because, um, when I start on the cylinders, that's when I like to begin talking about the ribs. Like I said, I'm showing you my my lesson plan when everyone's got wheels and off you go. So um, at this stage, I don't talk about ribs yet. I just talk about how to move the clay around and how to do a little bit of finishing. Um, the next one we do will be a cylinder and that's when we start using the ribs. Quite hard in the middle there, but right in this spot here where it, you've got the transition of the support underneath into the wall of clay and thin air, that's where you need to be really careful. And the clay loves to spread out. You look at it the wrong way, it'll overstretch. Oh, yeah. 